again, this is the one place where either day or night you can have random encounters with thugs, as this is considered the most dangerous part of Kirkwall. Kind of like this. You do get results, don't you? Break some heads tomorrow, maybe. Good payday. <laughs> How lovely. And there's one more tutorial. I think it's over here. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Say the blight's done. Yes. This is it. Never done. And uh, as you might expect, there are proportion disproportionately a large amount of Ferelden's down here. Tom Wise? Huh? Oh, Hawk. I haven't seen you since we did that job together for Athenra. Been a while. Heard you're going on some expedition into the Deep Roads, and right into Darkspawn territory. Sure that's wise? We can't all make a living in the Undercity. Just watch your back. That's all I'm saying. Say, you still in the market for some poisons? A Fenril's scarce these days, and the Coterie have their own mixers. You find any rare reagents and want me to whip you up something, just let me know. In fact, since you're an old friend, here's a recipe. My speciality. Everyone needs an edge sometimes, right? So this is the final crafting thing that you can do, and that's to make various poisons. Same uh, interface as potions or... I'm sorry I couldn't get you more information about the circle, Rooms. Bethany. <laughs> it's difficult without naming you. Thank you for being discreet. I don't want the Templars at my door. No one does. Let them corral the troublemakers. I just want information. Right. Right. It sounds like I'm trying to convince myself, doesn't it? I wouldn't have said, but yes. Nothing. Today. I'm gonna head this way. I am this way. Dark Town is uh, kind of the most maze-like of the main city areas. You can kind of see relatively where we are. Um, up here, these are some of the causeways that go across the main area of the quarry into the higher parts of the city. It's too bad you can't actually get up on those places. That'd be kind of neat. Healers can't do a thing here. Not even that mage. So, here are the, as they say, the lit lanterns. this place a sanctum of healing and salvation. Why do you threaten it? Whoa, now. I want to know about the Deep Roads. Did the Warden send you to bring me back? I'm not going. Those bastards made me get rid of my cat. Poor Sir Pouncelot. He hated the Deep Roads. You had a cat named Sir Pouncelot in the Deep Roads? He was a gift. A noble beast. Almost got ripped in half by a Genlock once. He swatted the bugger on the nose. Drew blood, too. The blighted warden said he made me too soft. I had to give him to a friend in Amaranthine. Aww. I like Sir Pounce a lot. So you came to Kirkwall just to escape the wardens? You say that like it's a small thing. Yes. I'm here because there's no warden outpost. No darkspawn and a whole host of refugees to blend in with. 
and some reasons of my own. Dun dun dun. I've always heard that joining the Wardens is for life. That's only partly true. The hopelessly tainted by the Darkspawn and plagued by nightmares about the Archdemon parts don't go away. But it turns out if you hide well, you don't have to wear the uniform or go to the parties. I'm part of an expedition into the Deep Roads. Any information you have could save people's lives. I will die a happy man if I never think about the blighted Deep Roads again. You can't imagine what I've come through to get here. I'm not interested in... Although... A favor for a favor. Does that sound like a fair deal? You help me, I'll help you. Let's be more specific. I don't do anything involving children or animals. I have a warden map of the depths in this area. But there's a price. I came to Kirkwall to aid a friend. A mage. A prisoner in the wretched gallows. The Templars learned of my plans to free him. Help me bring him safely past them, and you shall have your maps. Tell me about your friend. His name is Carl Fekler. He was sent here from Ferelden, when Kirkwall's circle required new talent. His last letter said the Knight Commander was turning the circle into a prison. Mages are locked in their cell, refused appearances at court, made tranquil for the slightest crimes. I told him I would come. Are these accusations true? Ask any mage in Kirkwall. Over a dozen were made tranquil just this year. The more people you ask, the worse the rumors become. What do the Templars know of your plans? I don't know. I had been exchanging notes with Carl through a maidservant in the gallows. Then the letters stopped coming. You want to make your friend an apostate? That's such a weighted term. Yes, Andres they said magic should serve man, not rule him. But I've yet to find a mage who wants to rule anything. It goes against no will of the Maker for mages to live as free as other men. I doubt the Divine would agree with that. The Divine is only a mouthpiece for the Chantry. The Maker does not speak through her. Never mind. I do not seek debate. Only your aid. How do you plan to break him out of the gallows? I'm hoping it won't come to that. I sent Carl a message to meet me in the Chantry tonight. Maker willing, he'll be there, alone. But if there are Templars with him, I swear I'll free him from them, whatever the cost. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, we need these maps, so I guess we'll have to help him out here. You've convinced me. What's your plan? I welcome your aid. I have already sent word for Carl to meet me in the Chantry tonight. Join us there. And we'll ensure that no matter who is with him, we all walk away free. Oh, I'm sure Aveline's just loving this. Alright, we have the history of Kirkwall here, chapter 4. So we'll be going a little out of order here, but oh well. The Threnhold family assumed its foreboding control of the city at the very onset of the Dragon Age, less than a week after Merrick Theron retook the Ferelden throne from Orlais. Since this was followed by a civil war in Antiva, the much maligned Three Queens era, and a coup in the Taventer Imperium, many thought that the Dragon Age would bring devastating change. Perhaps this was a hasty estimate, but it was true for Kirkwall. Viscount Chivalry Th Chivalry... <sighs> try again. Viscount Chivalry Threnhold was a vicious thug who took power through a campaign of intimidation, and his son Perrin, who succeeded him in 914 Dragon, was even worse. Taxes were crippling, and Perrin Threnhold used the ancient chains extending from the Twins, standing at Kirkwall's Harbor, unused since the new exalted marches, to block sea traffic and charge exorbitant fees from Arlesian ships. The Empire threatened invasion following the closure of the Waking Sea Passage, and for the first time the Chantry used the Templars to pressure the Viscount. Until that point, the Templars had done nothing to counter the, Th the Threnholds, 
even though as the largest armed force in Kirkwall they could have. Knight Commander Galvian's only written comment was in a letter to Divine Beatrix III. It is not our place to interfere in political affairs. We are here to safeguard the city against magic, not against itself. The Divine, as a friend to the Emperor, clearly had other ideas. In response, Viscount per Perrin hired a mercenary army, forcing a showdown with the Templars. They stormed the gallows, and hung Knight Commander Gylian, igniting a series of battles that ended with Perrin's arrest and the last of his family's rule. The Templars were hailed as heroes, and even though they wished to remain out of Kirkwall's affairs, it was now forced upon them. Knight Commander Meredith appointed Lord Marlow Dumar as the new Viscount in 921 Dragon, as she has and she has remained influential in the city's rule ever since. So that's that was what the Kirkwall was like when Meredith uh, appeared in the city, it seems. And uh, she seems quite the opposite. While the previous Knight Commander was determined to keep the Templars out of uh, political affairs, Meredith seems to be wanting to do the opposite. Never knew human. Okay, we need to get out of Dark Town and to the Chantry at night. So let's do that. So we'll need to go to High Town first. Normally you can't get into the Chantry at night, it's closed. The streets aren't safe at night. We should do something about that. Yeah, we probably will in time. Or over time, I should say. I saw Carl go inside a few minutes ago. No Templars so far. Are you ready? I didn't see anyone suspicious out here. Let's do this fast. All right. I'll handle the talking. You watch for Templars. When we find Carl, just let me talk to him. Uh, okay. So here is our first look at the interior of the Kirkwall Chantry. Much more impressive than the chantries we saw in Ferelden. And that, of course, is Andraste. Um wearing much more military guard. She did end up leading an army t that uh, very nearly came to toppling uh, all of the Tevinter Imperium, so I'm not surprised she's depicted that way. Some places appear to be cordoned off. I'm gonna have a quick look around here for some random junk. Before we uh, continue the quest here, yeah, Carl's just over there. I thought there were some other side areas. Maybe not. And as you might expect, here's some text on the Maker. Man, that's a tall statue. There was no word for heaven or for earth, for sea or sky. All that existed was silence. Then the voice of the Maker ran out, rang out. The first word, and his word became all that might be, dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities, and from it made his firstborn. And he said to them, In my image I forge you, to, to you I give dominion over all that exists. By your will may all things be done. Then in the center of heaven he called forth a city with towers of gold, streets with music for cobblestones, and banners which flew without wind. 
There he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. The children of the Maker gathered before his golden throne, and sang hymns of praise unending. But their songs were, songs were the songs of the cobblestones. They shone with the golden light reflected from the Maker's throne. They held forth the banners that flew on their own. And the voice of the Maker shook the fade, saying, In my image I have wrought my firstborn. You have been gi given dominion over all that exists. By your will all things are done. Yet you do nothing. The realm I have given you is formless, ever-changing. He knew he had wrought amiss, so the Maker turned from his firstborn and took from, and took from the fade a measure of its living flesh and placed it apart from the spirits and spoke to it, saying, Here I decree opposition in all things, for earth sky, for winter summer, for darkness light. By my will alone is balance sundered and the world given new life. And no longer was it formless, ever changing, but held fast, immutable, with words, of, for, with words for heaven and for earth, sea and sky. At last did the Maker from the living world make men, immutable, as the substance of the earth, with souls made of dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. Then the Maker said, To you, my secondborn, I grant this gift. In your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame, all-consuming and never satisfied. From the fade I crafted you, and to the fade you shall return, each night in dreams, that you may always remember me. Then the Maker sealed the gates of the Golden City, and there he dwelled, waiting, to see the wonders his children would create. Uh, let's see, I was f never quite sure how to pronounce this particular book of the Chantry. Thren Threnodes? Threnodes? Something like that. That's the, that's the same book that offers the very first quote uh, in the opening of the original game. Alright, let's go see Carl. Hello? Anders, I know you too well. I knew you would never give up. What's wrong? Why are you talking like... I was too rebellious, like you. The Templars knew I had to be... made an example of. No! How else will mages ever master themselves? You'll understand, Anders. As soon as the Templars teach you to control yourself. Mm -mm. This is the apostate. No! Never take another mage as you took him. Yikes. You go down before anyone else. Should I be more afraid of Henders or the Templars at this point? How about you? I'll deal with it. What's the fighting? You are not I... Anders, what did you do? It's like... you brought a piece of the Fade into this world. I had already forgotten what that feels like. What did you do? Not the Fade part. The angry, glowing bit. It's like a gateway to the Fade inside you, glowing like a beacon. I have some... unique circumstances, yes. But Carl, what happened? How did they get you? The Templars here are far more vigilant than in Ferelden. They found a letter I was writing you. You cannot imagine it, Anders. All the color, all the music in the world, gone. I would gladly give up my magic. But this... I'll never be whole again. This is what Mother was protecting me from. Please, kill me before I forget again. I don't know how you brought it back, but it's fading. Carl, no. Maybe we can find a cure. Can you cure a beheading? The dreams of tranquil mages are severed. There is nothing left of them to fix. I would rather die a mage than live as a Templar puppet. Oof. The tranquil I've met seem content with their lot. Maybe it's not that bad. You have no idea. Your emotions... Your dreams, everything, stripped away on someone's whim. 
If I were made tranquil, I would wish for a friend compassionate enough to kill me. Carl, I'm sorry. Now, it's fading. Why do you look at me like that? Goodbye. <laughs> we should leave before more Templars come. That wasn't normal magic you just did, was it? I... This is hard to explain. When I was in Amaranthine, I met a spirit of justice who was trapped outside the Fade. We became friends, and he recognized the injustice that mages in Thedas face every day. And that's different than a demon. Just as demons prey on the deadly sins of mankind, there are good spirits who embody our virtues. Spirits of compassion, fortitude, justice. They are the Maker's first children, and they have all but given up on us. What does this have to do with your eyes glowing? To live outside the Fade, he needed a host. I offered to help him. We were going to work together, bring justice to every child ever ripped away from his mother to be sent to the Circle. But I guess I had too much anger. Once he was inside me, he changed. So, you have this spirit of justice living in your head? It's not like that. He's gone now. He's part of me. It's not like we can have a conversation. I feel his thoughts as my own. Not even the greatest scholar could tell you where I end and he begins. This is obviously difficult for you. I thought I was helping my friend. He would have died, I guess. If that even means anything. And he wanted to help me. He knew what mages have suffered. You tried to help a friend. Surely no harm can come of that? I wish I still had your innocence. There was too much hatred in me. Justice thought he would overcome that. But my anger, when I see Templars now, things that have always outraged me, but I could never do anything about, he comes out. And he is no longer my friend, Justice. He is a force of vengeance, and he has no grasp of mercy. So here we have a flirt option. This he's uh, Anders is another companion who you can uh, potentially romance. So he will be in the line for voting eventually. Can Justice ever be separated from you? I don't think so. The only way a spirit has ever been separated from a living host is by its death. The curse is of my own making. All I can do now is hope to control it. Can you bring him out at will? No. He comes only when I've lost all power over myself. It's a madness, a frenzy. I only find out after what I might have done. This sounds extremely dangerous. Is there anything I can do for you? You're the first one I've ever told this. Thank you for not running away. My maps are yours. As am I, if you wish me to join your expedition. I thought I was done with the Grey Wardens. But if you have any need of me, I will be waiting here. So, sure enough, he joins the lineup. Let's see. Uh, we haven't had... We didn't get a chance really to use Meryl, so we'll put both of them in here. Anders and Meryl. For now, at least. Oh, we got some rivalry for Bethany on that one. I wonder what we said that she didn't like. <laughs> Alright, so not only do we have Meryl, who's a blood mage... But we also have Anders, who is currently possessed by a spirit that doesn't seem to really be acting like a good spirit. <laughs> Anders is a healer by trade, so naturally we'll give him maximum healing ability. 
Um, I also like to use uh, the spirit tree with him. Okay. I think we have two more. I think it's just two more. Um, besides the uh, bonus DLC companion. So let's go ahead and, and see if we can get them. Ferelden, three monsters Thinking... Is there a specific order I want to... F nah, this, nah, we don't need a specific order. I think I'll just go back to the hangman, because I believe we can find our next component... Component? Companion waiting for us there. You owe us, Isabella. Well, Lucky, I'll tell you what. Since the information you gave me was worth nothing. That's what I'll pay you. Me and my boys will get our money's worth, bitch. Oh, you poor sweet thing. Tell me, Lucky. Is this worth dying for? <laughs> I didn't think so. Ah, another echo of the past. It's Isabella. We haven't seen her since we went to Denerim in the original game. You're new around here, aren't you? Welcome, and keep your wits about you. You're nothing but tits and arse to the men in this place, and they won't hesitate to grab at both. Speaking from experience, are we? <laughs> After a few broken fingers here and there, they got the idea. I'm Isabella. Previously Captain Isabella. Sadly, without my ship, the title rings a bit hollow. You're Ferelden, aren't you? You have that look about you. I was in Denerim not too long ago. You know, you might be just what I'm looking for to solve a little problem I have. Can't anyone fix their own lives around here? Must be something in the water. Someone from my past has been pestering me. I've arranged for a duel. If I win, he leaves me alone. But I don't trust him to play fair. I need someone to watch my back. Uh, you're putting a lot of trust in us, then. What makes you think I'm right for this? You saw me talking to Lucky, didn't you? Those boys couldn't manage simple information gathering. I can't trust the riffraff in this place to do anything right. But you, you're different. Who's this person you've arranged to meet? His name is Hader. We worked together back in Antiva. He's never liked me. He's been asking about me all around Kirkwall. Thought I'd get it over with and meet him face to face. You wanted information from Lucky. What was it? I asked Lucky and his boys to track down something I lost. They failed to do it. It's nothing to worry about, and this is much more important. Why a duel? <laughs> I like duels. It's what I do. And if I win, he'll be dead. Problem solved. It's because she used to be part of the subclass of rogue known as a duelist, so that makes sense. I think I could manage watching your back. <laughs> I'll bet. I've arranged to meet Hader in Hightown after dark. I'll meet you there. I love it when people just randomly come up to you and ask them to be a second in a duel. <laughs> Although it is nice to see Isabella again. She's had uh, quite the change uh, 
visually compared to what she was before, and her voice actor uh, actress is different. Um, but her personality seems pretty consistent. The, can't, the same can't quite be said, actually, for either Anders or Meryl. Um, Meryl, like I said, uh, is someone that you can encounter in the Dalish elf origin story of the first game, if you choose that one. She's uh, a bit more flighty and a bit more unsure of herself in this incarnation of her compared to the uh, granted little time that you had to talk with her in the first game. Anders is a lot darker, a lot more broody, um, not nearly as carefree and, and joking as he was uh, in Awakening, unfortunately, although at least they do give him a story reason for why he has changed so much with the merging of him and Justice. So it's almost like we get two reoccurring yeah. characters for the price of you one there. Alright. So we'll need to go at High Town at night to attend this duel, so let's do it. What makes the gang so angry at night? Someone should do something about them. Everyone needs to put in their two cents that you need to go and <laughs> uh, get rid of the thugs on the street. Oh, we have a bounty notice here. Offered to, on the authority of His Excellency, Viscount Marlo Dumar. Citizens of able nature, Viscount Dumar requires your aid. His son, Seamus Dumar, has been lost to uncertain company, and a safe return is sought with all haste. Make your case of skill to Seneschal Bran at his station in His Excellency's Keep, and the reward for this act shall be generous in both sentiment and coin. So it seems that someone has kidnapped the Viscount's son. Let's make this quick! Here's Isabella. But before we can talk to her, we have random thugs to get rid of. I love having a tank who will just run up and take all the damage. So much slot. Let's give some rain of arrows for the enemies over there. Oh, one thing I meant to say earlier during Anders' quest, but I didn't get a chance to, is the idea of tranquility. Um, I'll say this a couple of times during the game, but there were a few instances where I thought they could have been more vague, but they ended up going a bit more black and white, which is you know, not really something I like. Uh, one of the things I enjoy about Dragon Age is, is how gray a lot of the characters and the story points tend to be. And one of those things was tranquility. You were never quite sure whether people who either were made tranquil or volunteered for it uh, would have ended up regretting their decision or not. Whereas, thanks to uh, <laughs> Anders' quest, we learn that, indeed, tranquility is something that is seemingly pretty horrible. Um, and not something that really should be placed on people, as it seems to be rather traumatic. So that takes the idea of tranquility out of the realm of, of being gray and into the realm of just being something terrible and something that definitely should be avoided. Um, not something that I would have done if I was in charge of the story, but oh well. Alright, back to Isabella. There you are. I've been here for hours. Hader hasn't shown up. No one has. I don't like this. Maybe he forgot and we can all go someplace nicer. <laughs> That's the wench we're looking for. Got her. Looks like a fight. Be ready. That's Petrify right there. 
Like I said, it's a very cool ability. Got a letter that Hader was sent to that mercenary. And sending thugs to finish me off. Coward. He'll not get away with this. Come on. All right, so now we have to follow Isabella through the streets here. Two out. Oops. <laughs> Camera is not always placed in a, in a good location. Let's go ahead and bring Loco out and have him have some fun with these mercenaries. Front him. Isabella, should have known you'd find me here. Tell your men to burn the letters next time. Castillon was heartbroken when he heard about the shipwreck. You should have let him know you survived. It must have slipped my mind. <laughs> Where's the relic? I lost it. Castillon's just going to have to do without. Lost it? Just like you lost a ship full of valuable cargo? They weren't cargo, Hader. They were people. Those slaves were worth a hundred sovereigns a head. And you let them scurry off into the wilds. And now the relic's gone too. Castillo won't be happy to hear that. I promise you. Will someone explain what's going on? Isabella's been a very bad girl. Ruined a perfect business deal and then ran away. She didn't tell you? I told her enough. I said I arranged for a duel, which I did. I also said you wouldn't play fair, which you didn't. We can talk later if you want. Right now, we have other problems. Oh, a bunch of slavers. Well, no one's gonna miss you guys. Your threats end here. Here we go! I don't know if that's supposed to be funny or not, but I... <laughs> I always get a chuckle to myself when I see her throw that dagger. And you think it's going to hit Hayden, and then it just hits some random underlay. <laughs> Let's have a rain of arrows. Arrows for everyone. Oh, there's a few more. Didn't even see that. There we go. Should have done that a long time ago. Castillon won't hear about me from Hader, but he'll find me eventually. I just have to get him the relic. It's simple as that. Who is Castillon? He's a powerful merchant based in Antiva. I believe he has ties to the Felicissima Armada. I used to work for him. The jobs mostly involved smuggling lyrium, jewels, or the occasional criminal acquaintance. He paid well. I imagine. What's so interesting about the relic? I don't really know what it is, except that it's ancient and worth my weight in gold. 
Castillon has me chasing it down as payback for freeing his slaves. <sighs> to be honest, I think he just wants me dead. But that would be letting me off easy. Good friends you have here, Isabella. You hired Lucky to track down information on the relic. That's right. He insisted he knew everything that was going on in Kirkwall. He lied. <laughs> I bet he doesn't even know everything going on in his pants. Did you end up in Kirkwall because your ship was destroyed? There was a storm. The ship ran aground on the reefs near the city. I managed to make it to shore. Most of my men weren't as lucky. Poor sods. I knew some of those men almost ten years. Ah, oh, balls. Pretty much. What's this about you freeing slaves? I was asked to escort Castillon's cargo ship. I got a bad feeling about the job partway through. Boarded the ship to find slaves. Nearly two hundred. Elves, humans, children even. It was sickening. They paid Castillon to take them away from the Blight. He took their money and sold them into slavery. Even I know that's wrong. Didn't expect that, did you, Guardsman? Hmm. If getting the relic gets Castillon off your back, then I'll help you retrieve it. I still don't know where it is, but you'll be the first to know if I hear anything. Anyway, thanks for helping me out with Hader. I think I'll tag along for a while. There might be something I could do for you. And I have a room at the Hanged Man if you're looking for company later.